Hello and welcome to this short little lesson on filtering data in Leaflet. Please understand this is actually lecture 50 of an entire course on Leaflet that's going to be available June 15th or so. I also have an introduction to web programming course that's a prerequisite for that course and it's available now. There's information on signing up for both of those at the end of this lecture. So if you like what you see and you're interested in learning more and you can make it to the end of this lecture, you'll see everything you need to know then. All right, let's get started. Welcome back, students. Hopefully you all got your search buttons working for the eagles and raptors and burrowing owls. If you didn't, just go ahead and download the Lecture 50 start zip file from the course materials and unzip it in your WebMap 201 directory. If you want, it might be a good idea to zip up the files that you already have there as a backup, and that way you can go back if you want try and figure it out. But at least if you open the Lecture 50 start zip files, you'll be in the same starting spot as we are now. And you'll have those functioning search boxes as well. Now in this lecture, we're going to add the ability to filter which data gets displayed by choosing a value from a set of radio buttons. In this example, we will filter the Eagle data set by the status property. And the status property only has two values, active nest and inactive location. And so we have two options plus an all category. Now this will require a bit of HTML to create the radio button elements. We will make one div to hold all of our radio buttons, and we'll call it div eagle filter, and give it a bootstrap column class so that it occupies the full width of the sidebar. Inside that div, we'll put three column divs that each occupy four of the 12 columns available. And each column will get a radio button. The first one will be the selection for showing all the nests. The second button will select only active locations. And the third button will select inactive locations. Now a couple of things. Notice that each of these radio buttons has a name attribute shown in red, and that name is set to the same value, FLT Eagle for Filter Eagle. Radio buttons need to be part of a group, and only one of those buttons can be selected at a time. When one of the buttons is selected, the others automatically become unselected. And the name attribute is how we define which buttons are part of which group. All the buttons with the name Filter Eagle are in the Filter Eagle group, and only one of these can be selected at a time. Also look at the value attribute in blue, and notice that the second two have a value set to exactly the same value as the attribute value that they're selecting for. And this becomes important in our JavaScript, as we'll see later on. Finally, notice that the first radio button has a checked attribute in green. This is how we set which button is selected initially when the DOM is created from an HTML. We can change it, but remember, HTML is how we set the initial condition of the DOM. Okay, we don't need any CSS for this exercise other than some bootstrap classes for setting the column widths. But we do need some JavaScript. First, we need an event handler to respond to the click event on the radio buttons. And so far in this course, we have mostly been using jQuery to select individual elements by their IDs. And jQuery works great for that, but its real power is being able to select multiple elements and perform operations on them together. In this case, our selector selects all input elements with a name attribute of filter eagle. And of course, these are our three radio buttons. And we apply the same event handler for the click event to all three. Our event handler is very simple. Two lines of code. First, we reset the eagle IDs array that we created for our autocompletion widget to an empty array. And the reason for doing this will become clear soon, I think. Next, we call the eagle nest layers refresh method. This is not a native leaflet method, it's one that comes with the leaflet Ajax plugin that we use to load the data from a disk file, and it simply reloads the data from disk. But as it does that, remember it also runs our point to layer function and filter functions again. And it's in that filter function that the real work happens. And this is also why we need to reset the array holding the eagle nest IDs in it. If we didn't do that, when we refresh, it would just push a new set of IDs to that array, and then we'd have duplicates. And we don't want that. And we only want to see the IDs that are in the currently selected group. So let's take a look at our filter function. First we need to define it and include the JSON variable that gets included on every iteration. And this comes in automatically because we set this function as the filter option in our GeoJSON constructor method. Next you create an attribute variable that holds the value of the properties object. We've seen this many times, it just gives us a shorthand method for accessing the feature's properties or attributes and makes our code easier to read. The next line of code is very important. It uses a jQuery pseudo selector to select the radio button that is currently selected 
and retrieves its value attribute and assigns that to a variable called opt eagle, which is shown here in green. The part in red is a jQuery selector that selects all the radio buttons. Then the part in blue is a pseudo selector that narrows down the selection to only the radio button that is currently selected. And it's very important that you understand this if you're going to work with radio buttons. Then we have a line of code that checks if the selected radio button has a value of all, and if it does, the filter function simply returns true for everything, which means every feature will be included in the layer. If the selected radio button is not all, then it returns true or false depending on whether the value of the status attribute matches the value of the currently selected radio button. And this is why we needed the value attribute of the radio buttons to exactly match the values of the feature's status property. And this code may be a little confusing. We could have had a switch statement on the value of the currently selected radio button, but that would have taken 8 or 10 lines of code. It would have been more readable, and normally I'm an advocate for making your code readable, but sometimes when you're writing a function that gets called hundreds or thousands of times, it's better to keep your code succinct for performance reasons, even if you sacrifice some human readability. So basically, this returns true if the value of the selected radio button is active nest, and the feature status property is also active nest. But it returns false if the feature status property is something other than active nest. Likewise, if the value of the selected radio button is inactive location, it returns true if the feature status property is inactive location, and false if it's anything else. So it handles all four of these cases in one line of code. And this prevents us from testing all four cases with individual if statements. If this is not clear to you, take a few minutes to pause the video and think it through. Then we have one last task, and that is to set the filter option of the GeoJSON constructor method that creates the eagle nest layer to the function that we just wrote. Remember, in our HTML, by default the all button is checked. And so by default, when this web map first gets loaded, all of the eagle nests will be shown. And then after that, you can select by active or inactive nest, or go back and select all the nests. Okay, let's go write this code. Okay, let's start with our HTML. We're going to put our selection buttons down here right below our find eagle div that contains our search box and search button. So again, I'll use emmet to create a div with an ID of filter eagle. And I'll give it a bootstrap class of column extra small 12. And then I'll hit tab to expand that. And I'll make another div that just has a class column excess Four, so that'll make it take up one-third of the space in our sidebar because we're going to have three of them. And then inside that, I have an input element with a type of radio and a name of filter eagle, a value of all, and we're going to set the checked attribute for this so it's checked by default. And then this input only shows the radio button itself. We still need to put some text there to describe what the radio button does. So that's one column. And I'm going to just copy this and paste it in two more times because the code is almost the same. The second one is going to have a value of active nest. And it's not going to be checked. So I'll delete that. And then the text is just going to say active. And the third one is going to have a value of inactive location. And again, it's not going to be checked, so I'm going to delete that. And I'll just change the text to inactive. So that's our HTML. Let's go take a look at the map real quick. I'll hit refresh. Now open the sidebar, and there we have our buttons in three columns all active, inactive. Right now nothing happens. I can select them because they're part of the group and that's part of the default HTML functionality, but there's no event handler for the click event, so nothing happens when I click. Other than we get a little black dot that shows that we've just selected something different. Okay, let's go back to our editor and we'll write some JavaScript. So we'll go down to our eagle section. Let's see, burring owls, clients, there we go, eagle functions. And we'll use jQuery to create an event handler for the click event of all the radio buttons that have a name of filter eagle. So click 
click and then we have our anonymous function and in that function we first reset our eagle IDs to an empty array just so we don't end up with duplicate values and so that if we select for instance the just the active eagle nests we end up with only the IDs of active eagle nests in this eagle IDs array and then we call the layer eagle nests refresh method and then we have to write a function I'm going to do that up here right below the return eagle marker function that's our point to layer function and I'll write function filter eagle and that gets a JSON variable automatically because it's included as a filter option of the GeoJSON constructor method and they'll create our attribute variable it's going to hold the properties property of the JSON object and I'll create another variable that holds the value of the current filter selection and we do that using this handy jQuery pseudo selector it selects first all the input elements with the name of filter eagle and then uses a pseudo selector to select only the radio button that's currently checked and we use the val method to return its value then we check to see if that value is all and if it is then we just return true for everything if it's not then we execute this else code block and then we only return true if the status attribute is equal to the value of the currently selected radio box and then our one last thing is we have to set this filter eagle function up here where we read in our eagle nest we have a point to layer option we're going to set the filter option to filter eagle and that's it let's go reload our map and see if it works open the sidebar I see we have active eagle nest and inactive eagle nest and if I just click active that inactive eagle nest should go away and it just did so now all we have are active eagle nest showing if I click inactive the active eagle nest will disappear and we'll see only the inactive eagle nest which just happened now we have an inactive eagle nest showing inactive inactive and we can click all and they go back again now notice this inactive eagle nest is 15 and right now we have all and we'll see we have a choice of 15 it's one of our choices in our autocomplete if I click inactive I still have a choice of 15 but if I click active and I type 15 it's not found that's not one of the choices because we're only showing inactive eagle nest so we can only search for inactive eagle nest okay so that's going to be it for this lecture what I'd like you guys to do is to go try and replicate this functionality for burrowing owls and raptor nests we're going to use radio buttons to select those two but we're going to filter things a little bit differently with the linear projects we're going to filter on the type attribute and there's nine or ten potential types so we're going to use checkboxes to filter those and we'll see how that's done in the next lecture and we'll see you then